on being one of the skinny girls at fat camp. By the fifth year of fat camp, we didn't have much left to lose. So we cut our shirts in half and pierced each other's belly buttons with sewing needles in the bunk bathroom. Socks in our mouths like they were loaves of bread, but they weren't and would never be again, we swore. And of course we walked those hills like queens. Of course, we sometimes pinned ourselves against the batting cages like we owned the place. We were the goal weight. We got tanning oil in our care packages and cooked like baked goods in bikinis and everyone was hungry. I mean, we were never mean. We just stood there, tall and golden, like the McDonald's arches you could see from the camp's locked gate. It's not like we were doing anything that wasn't waiting for us when we got home and were invisible again. It's not like we returned to a place where we didn't cry when there was a calorie count on the menu and when there wasn't, and that's how we got good at math. Not like there wasn't some punk kid who didn't scream fat camp when we walked into class. Our summer vacation, the toilet paper forever trailing behind our shoes. It's not like the hierarchy never feasted on us two. When they said queen for a day, they meant on a porcelain throne, trying to shit out an extra half pound before weigh-ins so we could be proud to write home the before and after girls both live in my body. I was 11 when my mom left the brochure for fat camp on my kitchen table, I hated her for it. I cried into the pamphlet and said yes anyway, and it took 10 years for my parents to pay it off. That's how important it was. I finally wrote about being the fat girl I was called my whole life, and a fat activist said I wasn't fat enough to speak, said I just wanted attention, but I already get attention. The men on the street whistle, and when I don't respond, snort like pigs. The doctor holds up the weight chart, points to normal, then points to me. The body positive poet pointed to me and posted online, you're not fat just because you don't have a chin. I spend the next eight months holding back my neck in the mirror, imagining a gruesome surgery. A feminist hero responds, you're not fat, you just have a shark body. So I learn everything I can about sharks, that they die when they stop moving. So I lay in bed for weeks until my 100 pound housemate is getting ready for a party and says that her jeans make her look obese and I get it. I wanna tear her apart. But that is me at my smallest. I know that every size of woman has been thrashed in the jaws of some ugly machine. I know the cruelty I have spoke unto others was first practiced in the mirror, was taught to me by a lineage of men. I know that in the after picture, I understand my privilege and my pain. I forgive. I am smiling. I am so big.